Scale, quantize, and pad perform are ruining your music. What's up, everybody? It's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials. Pick up your premium membership. It's 50 cents a day. And also, please do not forget to stop by CMPKits.com. Get yourself a copy of the brand new Chords for Scaler and Ripcord, also including the mini files for the CLB album. And we're going to be diving into more of that today. Um, now, what I want to talk to you guys about is, first of all, if you're here just for the free dot progression file for MPC standalone in the MPC software, I just need you to go to cmpkits.com, click on the MPC kits tab, and you will find the uh, progression packs that are compatible with your MPC in standalone and in software mode as well as the free progression that we're going to be using in this video. Now, for the rest of you who are interested in learning why pad performance scale quantize is absolutely ruining your music, welcome. What I want to do now is I want to play you guys a beat that has a chord progression that drifts in and out of the scale twice. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Now, did you guys notice how that nothing sounded like out of key or sour? Um, using the MPC, one of our favorite workflows is to use pad perform to trigger chords. Um, it's such a huge help. You just lock in your scale and hit the pads until you find something that works. And for a lot of people who maybe, you know, didn't have a working knowledge of chords and chord progressions, this might seem like the holy grail. But scale locking actually prevents us from accessing certain musical flavors that all of the top musicians use to express their ideas in a more soulful and effective way. Let's hop in the DAW and let's break down exactly what is happening with this progression, why it sounds so great, why you should use this dot progression file in the future. And while we're there, we can look at what this would sound like if we only used pad perform and the notes from the scale to make this. If we just look at this progression for what it is, this seems to be a very, you know, a very simple, straightforward progression, right? Um, you could see that if you, if you examine the root notes, you're going from an E flat down to a D. And then on this last one, we go and we hit a C. If you know your scales, you know that that's the, as just following the root notes, that is E flat major scale, right? The chords that we're playing sound like this. And that's a fantastic sound, but it's not in the scale. I want to show you guys what would happen if I went out of progressions mode and I just went into chords. We took our root note and we made this like how we would go about doing it. Let's go ahead and change this to a major. And then we'll have the same chords. One, three, five, seven, because you see we're playing sevens here. Now listen to listen to what this chord progression sounds like. Do you see how that seven chord, like it sounds, it sounds a little tense. It sounds a little like it's, it, it's not really flowing right. It doesn't sound out of key, but it's not nearly as pleasing as this. And that is why I say 
using scale quantize is completely killing your music because if you were to you know if you were to use pad perform and you were to load up a major scale and you tried to do that progression you might never touch a one seven six walk down again in your life because you'd be like you know what that doesn't you know that doesn't sound like anything that um i'm used to hearing and it's just <laughs> it's just what am i going to use this for right so what is the difference between those two um if we take if i take this um if i take this and i move this and i make it easy to look at right and we go let's just let's just use this in in c major right so we can all follow along so this is all white notes and this way we'll easily be able to tell the notes that are out of the scale if we look at this we see that if we were to write this chord in scale these two notes here they'd have to be white notes so in order to create this chord it's every other note in the scale you're going here and then you skip this white note boom skip this white note boom skip this white note boom right same thing here but what we're actually doing in order to get our chord progression which sounds awesome and doesn't sound weird and is used on the hit song fair trade is that we are taking these two notes both of them and sharpening them one semitone and what this is doing instead of using this chord the way that it's laid out in the scale where it's a minor chord we're taking this and we are converting it into a major chord right and not only are we converting it into a major chord because we're raising our fifth as well we're now turning we're now turning this into a dominant chord and the use of dominant chords is something that is like so under discussed in like hip-hop and loop maker world because there's just no tutorials on it that show the piano roll so people don't take the time to learn it, but you can hear, you know, the, the how much of a difference using the dominant chord in this um, situation means. So the lesson that you want to take away from this is if you are using pad perform and you're going, you're going in a movement where you feel like, man, I really want to walk down or I want to walk up and you, and you come across a chord and you're like, that chord sounds a little weird. Go ahead and record it, right? You go ahead and record it, but when you get it in the piano roll, look at it. Are you going from a major to a minor? Let me take, you know, let me take these two notes, I highlight them, and let me just go up one semitone. See what that sounds like. Go, maybe go down one semitone. Maybe you'll discover something new. But the point is, the weird tones that you hear coming from pad perform, as long as, as, long as you don't fall into the trap of thinking that, you know, you have to only use the notes in the scale, you can fix it and you can make it sound soulful and expressive and you can communicate what those ideas that you have in your head are on top of that once you once you get into being more adventurous with chord substitution now moving from different scales um, also opens up for you for example when you listen to us go from this progression Now, if you look at what's going on, we have completely switched keys, right? So we've went from we've went from the uh, from the E flat major scale, and I took a I took a G minor, right? A G minor, and I said, okay, I'm gonna make my trap section a part of the G minor scale. How was I able to come up with that, right? Um, you know. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you guys like, oh, you just got to do it by ear and, and, and feel it out. No, there's an actual there's an actual formula. So if you go back to if you go back to this scale, um, it, so if you go back to these chords here, right, and you look and you say, OK, you know, I want to go and I want to I want to make a scale change. I want to add something 
that is really going to impress my listener, like all key changes do. Those are the best part of, you know, most traditional songs is that change, right? So in order in order to execute it, all you got to do is this. You go to your last chord, right? And you find the fifth. So here's the first, the third, and the fifth, right? And then this, this is the seventh degree. All you do is you take that fifth. This is the G right here. And you say, okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to create, is I'm going to create a new sequence, right? I'm going to create a new sequence. I'm going to change my snare, um, maybe change the 808. And I'm going to create how I would make just like a regular one chord beat. Like we all know how to make one chord beats. So I'm going to take and just make it a one chord beat and then and then go and loop it around or you could go even further and just say for this section i am just going to work in the g minor scale right so when you add that together of of going and saying all right so for my main chord progression i'm going to i'm going to play a chord that you know has maybe two notes that aren't inside the scale by substituting for a dominant right and then I'm going to change patterns. I'm going to change my drums. I'm going to change my snare. And then I'm going to move to a completely different scale. And then when I cut and then I'm going to, you know, end that pattern and come back. Right. And it all still sound like music instead of jumping from two different songs. This is that elite level of songwriting and producing that we're all trying to aspire to. And you absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, you can debate me in the comments, cannot get this sound and this feeling from simply picking a scale and only using the, the notes that are in the scale, right? So it's a CMP with Craftmaster Productions. Stop letting pad perform ruin your music. If you guys have any more questions about this, we go deep into subjects like this in sample class. Keep it simple, but do not be basic. And we will see you on the next one.